friends, I am, I am back. I've just been filming all the things for you this afternoon. Now it's almost evening. I'm looking, my chickens, they're all lined up outside of the coop. And uh, I've got two loaves of French bread over there rising. Earlier I did that video where we, I showed you all the different things we could freeze. Now I'm gonna show you, it's just a multitasking day. I'm gonna show you how I make freezer meals with leftovers. Yeah, I deal with freezer meals many times and you can watch I have just five years worth of big batch freezer cooking and large family freezer meals and breakfast freezer meals and lunch freezer meals and gluten-free freezer meals, dairy-free freezer meals, Instant Pot freezer meals, all the freezer meals over here. The idea behind that is I cook up a whole lot of food at one time and I make a whole lot of freezer meals from it. Now there are some freezer meals that I do where it's like slow cooker freezer meals, instant pot freezer meals, you assemble it pretty much raw in the bag and then you cook it for the first time in the instant pot. But many more times I do casserole pans and big bakes and such uh, or like mini meat loaves. You can also freeze those raw, but the little mini like lunchtime ones I'll do already cooked so many different options. So some people already have misconceptions about leftovers. I personally, I love the leftovers. Win it if I can get them, right? Because as families grow and kids grow, as a mama, you get used to cooking one amount and then people grow, growth spurts, add it all in here, and then all of a sudden, uh, the one thing you used to make would give you leftovers the next day, they eat it all in one meal. It's like, wait a minute, what happened to the leftovers? So um, I now purposely try, when if I do a single meal, I cook enough, at least this is my goal, to where I will have leftovers. Even feeding nine, 10, 12 people at a meal, that's my goal, okay. So last night, what I made for dinner as an example, I did, I mean, I was doing a creamy chicken in the slow cooker anyway. We ate about four to five pounds for dinner. I made 10 pounds. I made, uh, probably if I would have been sensible, but I'm never sensible, I could have cooked four, about four cups of jasmine rice. I cooked 12 cups of jasmine rice, okay? Um, with the corn, that was our side item, I never know. I mean, I think we did seven cans of corn and I think there is a little corn left. So I did that so that today we would have leftovers. Now, I could just reheat all that and we can do it again. Or I can take those leftovers and turn it into a freezer meal. So if you have rice and if you have some sort of protein to mix in there, and if you uh, have some sour cream or some butter or a cheese sauce, there's, there's a lot that you can mix and match and put together for a freezer meal. So I'm just gonna show you how I'm taking these particular leftovers and I'm making, let's call it, creamy chicken and rice with corn casserole. Um, I think I should be able to get at least two nine by 13 pans of this, maybe three. One of them I'm going to feed my family for dinner tonight. The other two we're gonna wrap, we're gonna freeze, and then we'll have freezer meals ready to go. Now, sad story, I always have a freezer full of freezer meals. We did lose a freezer full of freezer meals during our move. And I think in my vlog, I explained it fairly well. Part of the dynamics was the day that we lost that food, because I've gotten questions about that, so this is a great enough video to, to, to answer that uh, deeper. The day that that decision, the wrong decision was made, was the day we had closed on the sale of our house the day before. You all already knew it fell apart with our moving company, so we moved ourselves the last minute, uh, you know, packed ourselves in one day, did the moving truck, all of that. I was sick, I was not feeling well, super obvious from my videos. I had also done something weird to like my shoulder and my back for extra fun, so it was just like, you know, Murphy's Law for trying to move all the things. I had had four hours sleep the night we closed on this house. We closed, we then went, we had even before closing on four hours sleep, we went and got the moving truck, parked it here, went to our 9 a.m. closing, came back, unloaded our whole house full of stuff, 
into the basement, then took the moving truck, drove it an hour away, loaded up everything in my husband's garage, including all of our freezers and our refrigerators. When we got back here with that second load, total exhaustion, and it's like midnight, 1 a.m. or so. I mean, it's all a moving vortex. By the time we unload it all, we had put our freezers and refrigerators unloaded on the wrong side of the garage and the side where we needed to plug them in, our painter had like 20 doors from the house standing. So we unloaded them wrong side. You all have given me such great suggestions in the comment of that video. Why didn't you hook up your generator? Why didn't you run an extension cord? I have no idea. So this is just where, I mean, total brain frog, brain frog and brain fog, you could lose your freezer wheels. I just remember looking at Travis and saying those freezers and the refrigerators will be fine overnight. We'll move them and plug them in tomorrow. Went back to the hotel and slept. And then as my story goes, four days later, I look out and I'm like, oh, we never plug those in. So that's a trip down memory lane. All that to say, normally, many, many years, I'm doing things like taking leftovers, recreating them into another meal, and getting some freezer meals out of them. I know there's a lot of you home right now. A lot of you are cooking rice and cooking vegetables and cooking meat. Uh, you can mix it together with your leftovers. Even let's just say you don't want to look at that rice. Let, let's just say it's uh, jasmine rice and maybe it's a ground beef and maybe it's a mixed vegetable. We'll just make it up there, okay? You don't want to look at it anymore, but you definitely don't want to waste food. So what I would do is I would take all of that, I would mix it into a bowl like you're going to see me do, um, and then I would put it in 9 by 13 pans. I would top it with some cheese, call it good enough, put it in the freezer, and in two weeks, I mean, if you need a meal, you're going to be thankful that you have that in the freezer. You get my pans out. I also have a small stash of um, the metal disposable baking pans. But yes, over time, I have slowly invested in these glass casserole pans. These all had pretty good reviews on Amazon. I freeze them, but I don't bake them frozen. I let them defrost in the refrigerator, and then I might set them out at room temperature for a bit until I'm comfortable with putting them in the oven. I've yet to break a pan. I had a friend of mine the other night who had her dinner in a pan and it wasn't frozen. I don't know what happened, but it shattered on her. So that, that is a risk to take, it could happen. I haven't had that experience with these pans and I've been freezing them and cooking in these particular sets for a little over two years now. So just saying, you don't have to freeze in glass, but if you do get one that's that's stated by the manufacturer that it's freezer safe and oven safe. So these bigger baking pans, these are 10 by 16, and then these are like the standard 9 by 13. If I can get two 10 by 16s and one 9 by 13, that would probably be about four 9 by 13s from this recipe. Whenever you're doing one of these like pantry challenge type, make a dinner, using what you have, and also could you get a few extra meals out of it type things. I scratched around to see what I could add to this. Now I do have corn left from last night. I do have a ton of rice, and then I do have chicken. If I was not using this rice, if I didn't feel I'd use it in the next few days, which of course you can have rice made up in your fridge, use it for, for many days. I would just throw it in a gallon freezer bag or a couple gallon freezer bags, mark the date, squeeze the air out, put it in the freezer till later. I have even done things like later when I pull the rice out. I mean, if you're making a big pot of chili and you need to stretch it, I know right now some stores are limiting meat. Again, we're all scra scratching and pulling things together. I would put a gallon bag of pre-cooked rice from the freezer, defrost it, add it to your chili, no one's gonna know, but it's hearty and still nutritious and stretches that chili a long way. Okay, Liam, take this back to your dad, honey. That's for Benjamin. So, in scrounging around in my refrigerator, now I've got about a quarter of a tub, 
So 48 ounce tub, this must be about a cup, cup and a half of sour cream left in there. Now, from one of those uh, meal kit companies, I have several of these one ounce packages of sour cream. And then I have four, I have four ounces of a shredded Monterey Jack cheese. And then I have a little bit left of Parmesan cheese. I also, I mean, staples I usually have on hand are parsley, onion powder, garlic powder, uh, some salt and pepper. I do have more sour cream. I do have some more cheese. But the whole idea is, sorry, there's a little Minecraft creeper in here. <laughs> the whole idea is, again, we're trying to use up these little odds and ends. I mean, for our family, if I'm doing baked potatoes, we, we need more than that. So I'm gonna get out one of my big mixing bowls. Now, this is not my biggest. Almost, next to it, next to it. I'm just going to start dumping things into this bowl. Now this chicken yesterday, I cooked it in two slow cookers. We condensed it down to one. It was one of those 10 pound frozen packs of chicken from Walmart. So it's defrosted, put about five pounds each in a slow cooker. I took one can of cream of chicken soup, divided it in half for each slow cooker, and then cooked it on high for about four hours. And really this broth in here, we can use it too, but I just wanna get going with this. While I'm at it, I'm going to just get everything else dumped in here and we'll have one great big mix in time. These are just some little cheese packs I have. Oh. So what I did is I just looked through the refrigerator for little odds and ends. So hopefully this is just showing you to not be scared of your leftovers. There's lots of things you can do with them. Another thing is I do get questions about freezing sour cream. I talk about it often. Whenever you freeze it within a freezer meal, it cooks up delicious because it is all mixed in. I think sour cream is an awesome addition two freezer meals. Also just as awesome is Greek yogurt. I'll use Greek yogurt interchangeably for sour cream and sour cream interchangeably for Greek yogurt. But if you have access to Greek yogurt or do some homemade Greek yogurt, probably gonna be three or four cups over, which will equal one cup of sour cream for each dinner. Divided down by at least nine people means every person is getting less than one ounce of sour cream in their serving. Now this is similar to, I have a chicken broccoli Alfredo bake that I make and there's different ways I tailor it. It can be low carb or it can have rice or it can have noodles. Um, anyway, we've got probably not even a fourth of a cup of grated Parmesan cheese that's gonna go in here. Now we'll get some other spices. Actually, something new in my life, I have some garlic salt. So I will use that instead of table salt and then I will use pepper. And I think we're gonna put a little bit of Italian seasoning in this. Got it all mixed up. Here's the end result. So now let's see how many of these containers we can fill up. We just went and put our chickens in for the night. Some questions I've gotten lately with chickens is how, how do they not run off and how do you train them? And so even like our hens we have now when we moved them, within a day they knew where their coop was. Whenever we brought them, we kept them in the cage that we brought them in. We put that in their coop. And so they spent the, the first night in the cage in the coop. The next day we let them out to free range and we fed them right by their coop. And they're very smart. By that night we took the cage out of their coop. And as soon as the sun start to wet down, we let the door open. They were right back in there, no problem. So now when Liam just went out to shut their coop door for the night, we do have an outdoor light that's on on the outside of their coop. I like it on, just where it's placed at in our yard. Um, so because of that, we might have two or three, or tonight it was four out of the 11, still outside the coop, still eating bucks. The, confu the light confuses them a bit. But when Liam went out there to help them in and shut the door, they, they went right in on their own, didn't they? Yes. So instead of getting another pan out, I'm gonna take 
this extra that I have and just try to smoosh it on these pans a little more. So I do think that this would have been four nine by 13 pans. Now what's nice with having a freezer meal stash, and I definitely have videos that show this, if you get into any kind of unexpected family emergency or busy week, I mean, I know a lot of us when filming this are home right now, but unexpected emergencies galore in this world. Um, last summer, I ended up going to the emergency room with what I was concerned. I thought it might have been an ectopic pregnancy. It was not, but I was very concerned that it was. And it ended up being another issue going on, and I had to have a week of bed rest after that. And so my family, we just, we always mix in freezer meals, but that week in particular, because I had my freezer meals ready to go, they just ate out of the freezer. So I made these, and I'm gonna cover them, I'm gonna top them with some cheese. They're gonna look up with the cheese. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, two of these will freeze. And I think tonight, I will make one of these 10 by 16s because it might give us a few leftovers for tomorrow. It might not. Now, I know fresh vegetables are a problem in some places right now. I'm a big believer that food is food and people eating is what's important. If you have it, you could peel some carrots and have some carrot sticks. We have a bunch of apples that we need to eat up. I've got another bag in my garage refrigerator, and so I'll do a bunch of apple slices. So it may not go together, but then again, it's a filling dinner and some fruit. And then we're gonna read our Bibles and play some Uno and have a lovely evening. So I'm gonna put this in the oven at about 425, and I'm gonna check it about the 20 minute mark and decide if it's gonna go for 20 minutes or if it's gonna go for 25 or 30. We're just, again, we're, we're cooking it through, we're melting the cheese. I think by 25 minutes, it's gonna be good, but I'm gonna go ahead and get it in the oven now. And then these other two, we will wrap and label. Now, again, when it comes to wrapping and labeling and what you have available, these uh, baking dishes, the 10 by 16s, they came with these red lids. These are great for storing. I don't always use them for freezing, but then my friend Ashley was like, I always just throw my red lid on and just freeze it like that. Her families eat her freezer meals within two months usually. So you could do that. You could just put your red, push your red lid down on it. I usually wrap mine with foil and then label it on the foil and then wrap it in plastic wrap. Several of you said some great freezer meal ideas of writing the name of the meal on the front and then when you line it up you have the uh, meals listed there. I have a weird thing in my head where like I can look at my freezer and pretty much know what my different stacks are, but that, you know, I have other things that don't stick in my head, so what can I say? Gotta have something going for you somewhere. And so by doing this, even during this difficult time, I am slowly building up my freezer stash and getting more meals in my freezer for my family. Here's part of my apples we're gonna chop up for tonight. And don't be scared to do things like that. Not that it happens to scare you, but unconventional side dishes, no big deal. So here are two good sized freezer meals for my family to help start building back up our freezer meal stash. So then because all of us, we're not wasting anything right now, right? Um, this is what was left. I know it doesn't look super appetizing, but that's okay. The bottom of my slow cooker, there were several chunks of chicken, lots of little floating pieces of chicken. This yellow that you see is what um, was left from the chicken, from the cream of chicken soup I had split between two slow cookers. And then we've just got a lot of chicken broth. See all that? like big old chunks of chicken there. So of course, nothing is getting wasted. Um, I put this in a freezer bag. I labeled it chicken pieces and chicken broth, 320. And so what I will do is this would be a great base for a soup, mm -hmm. real good. So I'm just gonna put this in my freezer and we will make some sort of chicken soup or another chicken freezer meal or chicken dinner that needs some chicken broth. Um, but there you go, just a way to, to use it all. Okay, so very yummy, cheesy, 
cheesy ricey chicken piggy goodness. Okay, so here's a look at dinner. I just kept the apples on the cutting board and hear the herd coming. Okay, so so far, out of a 10 by 16 pan, nine people, adults, teens, toddlers, everything in between. That's what's left. And then here's our little bit of apples, but I'm sure a few more people finish those up. But there you go, there's one dinner. It's all done now. And everyone's had their extra helpings. So there you have it. If you would like my recipe for what I just pulled together to make an emergency freezer meals. Oh wow, Benjamin. Could you not bang that for a minute, buddy? Maybe not. Pull it. Emergency freezer meals out of leftovers. That will be linked down in the description below. I also have a brand new emergency pantry planning pack that is available to you for free. You can also find that down in the description. So I'll see you real soon with another brand new video. As always, let me know what you need. Tell me the kind of videos you would like to see, especially during this challenging time for the whole entire world. Uh, if there's just something else you need me to put out, let me know and I will try to get that done for you. Thank you, bye-bye.